Good evening and welcome to the Spirit of Truth. I'm Brian Lachance and we're going to be bringing you a gospel show tonight and doing some songs off our family album and uh, going to be playing a hymn on uh, the guitar for you and we're going to be talking about uh, shattered lives today on the show so if you know somebody or you yourself have had a shattered life at one time or another um, why don't you tune in to us and uh, we're going to be sharing how to how to rebuild a shattered life, you know, once uh, once it gets that way. And uh, I'm going to kick off the show and play a little instrumental hymn uh, called uh, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. <laughs> The uh, Lord just blessed me with a new guitar, and it feels so good. I hate to stop, but I'm going to have to. Frank saying, "I don't mind if you stop back there." But that's a, um, we want to get Shannon to to uh, to sing one of her songs off of her off of her album, and uh, just say a little bit something about your songwriting and stuff, Shannon. What? Well, I've been songwriting well ever since I was like a little girl, but the Lord started giving me songs gospel songs when I was about 16 or 17 and he was preparing me for what he had for me to sing for him and give him glory through the songs that I write mm -hmm. and yeah. I believe that the songs that I write that they touch people I've given away a lot of my tapes and I know that it's just reached out to people through the words in the song and um, this next song that I'm going to sing is called His Love is in Our Hearts For you, he'll do things your mind can't even conceive if you trust him now and dare to believe. He is ours, his love is in our hearts. We are his, and he is ours. He is ours, his love is in our hearts. Oh, today, the things that God has done, given new life through His Son, 
Jesus died on the tree so you and I could be set free. He's the A and the Z, the first and the last. The word of God who forgives our past. His love is alive in my soul. Only he can make me whole. Oh yeah, he is our His love is in our hearts. We are his and he is ours. He is ours. His love is in our hearts. Today, forever he'll stay, forever he'll stay. And because I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, I can truly say today that he lives in my heart and his love will stay. Amen. 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 Well, like we said, I want to talk about shattered lives today on the show and uh, in my own life, I know we've we've given our testimonies before on the show, but uh, I want to kind of do that a little bit, just a little bit of that again, and uh, and kind of elaborate on it a little bit. But uh, one of the, the there was three things in my life that left me in a shattered life at uh, 37, 38 years old, and uh, one. Well, you might have one of these things, or all three things, or maybe even more, you know. But uh, in in my case, it was uh, I went through an, an 18 year old, 18 mar years old marriage, and uh, I was I found myself going through divorce, and I found myself an alcoholic, and uh, and I found myself uh, um, an outcast from all of my religious friends. And uh, at a call, you know, when I was 18, I, I got born again and I found the Lord and I, I knew that I had a calling on my life to, to preach the gospel. But I kind of put that off, you know, and I, uh, I started seeking after all the things of the world instead. And it wasn't long, uh, you know, before, after I, I was putting people and things and material things and my career and all these things before the Lord, and and it wasn't long before uh, that calling and that feeling of, of the Holy Ghost and His purpose for my life got choked out of my life uh, by all the, these things of the world, and and uh, I found myself, you know, uh, at 30 years old uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, playing the Opry and playing for big names and uh, theaters in Branson and uh, doing a lot of studio work and session work and uh, things like that. Things, all these things I thought was going to make me happy and, and uh, what it did was just it ended up just choking all of the spiritual things out of my life because I put all this stuff first. And, and uh, I'll tell you, I found myself an alcoholic and at 38 years old and uh, I couldn't I couldn't get off of that stuff, man. I, I'm just going to tell you a little bit. My life was completely shattered, you know. Uh, my health was so bad at that time uh, from from traveling on the road and drinking so much and going through a divorce and all the things that I went through that uh, I could barely play the guitar, you know. I could barely go out on a gig and play. And uh, I'll tell you what I did to rebuild my shattered life uh, right now. The first thing that I did was uh, was I had to get right with God again, you know, and I, I know that I was saved during that time because I still believed in the Lord and everything, but uh, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and He will sit back and let you do whatever you're going to do and He'll wait. if He has a calling in your life, a lot of times He'll just He'll let you get it all out of your system, you know, and I guess that's what He did with me. I got real good and sick of, of, of of the way that I lived and the way that I was living and I wanted to, to get God back in my life where he was actually the Lord in my life and I first thing I had to do was get right with God and I had to repent of my failures you know and I had to, to, to quit crying over spilt milk you know I mean uh, my life was a mess and and I you know I had, you, that's the first thing you gotta do is quit f feeling sorry for yourself and I say man I gotta get it together here you know for your loved ones and for for everyone else, the only way that you can help them is by getting it together yourself. You know, uh, or you're no good for anybody. 
So I had to get right with God, you know, and I had to repent in all the areas that I blew it and wanted the Holy Spirit back, feeling, feeling my spirit and, and wanted Jesus back in my life. And I wanted his favor in my life again, you know, and all those things. So, um, and a lot of people will say, you know, well, you know, uh, it's a crutch, you know, to have, to believe in Jesus and to, to have him helping you. Well, you know, that's no more of a crutch than if, if you're, if you was in the Titanic and they're hand, in the boat sinking and they're handing out lifeboats and there's a guy in the back and everybody's taking the lifeboat and there's a guy back there saying, oh, I'm not going to take one, man. I can do it myself, you know. Well, that's, that's how stupid it is to, to not accept the help that Jesus Christ offers us. You know, all he did when he died on the cross, he offered us his help. He offered us a new spirit, you know, something that, that, that we can't have on our own. And, and I'm telling you, anybody that doesn't accept that, you know, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a fool in my book. But uh, that's all he's doing is, accept, is, is, is wanting to reach out and give us his help, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I needed his help in my life. It's no shame to admit when you're weak, you know. And uh, my strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not in me because uh, I, I've trusted in me for many years and it didn't get it. And I'm going to tell you, right now, it just didn't get it, man. Uh, the next thing I had to do was I had to I had to get rid of the alcohol in my life. And I can't explain, you know, I was an alcoholic for 10 years. And I drank every day and every night. And I can't explain how, how I got free from it. I, I went to A meetings and all that stuff. It didn't do no good. What helped me was when I went to the altar and the Lord took that away and I can't explain it. He just he just completely delivered me from it. And if you're an alcoholic or a drug addict out there today and you're listening to me, man, don't turn me off because uh, the Lord loves you, you know, and just because you're an alcoholic or, or a drug addict doesn't, you know, the Lord still loves you. And, and if you believe in him, and you confess Him with your mouth, and you believe Him, you're still going to get to heaven, you're still going to be saved, but God can set you free from that stuff. But the trick is, you've got to want it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a bondage, it was a bondage in my life, and, and I knew if I stayed an alcoholic, you know, that uh, uh, if I got married again, or whatever, you know, uh, the, I, of course I wanted to, to get married again, you know, and, uh, and try it again. But I would have the same mess on my hands that I had the first time. You know, a half a man will attract a half a woman. You know, I, I would have just attracted another alcoholic. And how many people know that two people with problems is worse than one people with problems, you know? And uh, so the Lord delivered me from that and took that out of my life, you know? And then I had to get my eyes off of religious people. All my religious friends had let me down, man, and, and I'll tell you, I had to start getting my eyes on Jesus, you know, and what he was all about, and reading the word, and, mm -hmm. and get my eyes off people, you know, because people will let you down, and uh, the one thing that I have here is uh, religion, uh, religion is living by rules and regulations and condemnation under the old law. And religion is pointing your finger at people and, you know, and always finding something wrong with somebody. But a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's, that's not, that's, that's different, man. It's freedom. It's a new spirit. He gives you a new spirit and your new covenant, man. Uh, it, it, you know, and, and the religious people are the ones that crucified Jesus. They're the ones that brought him up and, and accused him of blasphemy and everything because he was healing people on the Sabbath day. And stuff like that, man. I mean, uh, and all the disciples and the apostles, you know, every one of them were brought up before the pharaohs and everything uh, by religious people because they were preaching that, that God lives inside of us now and he doesn't dwell in temples and buildings made by man. Mm -hmm. And they all gave their lives, you know, and, and were martyred, man, for, for, for preaching, you know, this. And, and that's why I'm saying religion... Is, is junk, man, but the relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, that's what helped me. I had to get my eyes off all those religious people and what they were condemning and all this stuff. And uh, I got my eyes on Jesus, man, and he, I, I realized that he forgives and, and, and when you, you know, and he gives you a new chance, you know, and a new life. 
And uh, uh, that's kind of some things that I went through to rebuild my shattered life, you know. And, and I, I, I met, met my wife, you know, on about four years ago at a revival, and we've been married over three years. And, and there was, you know, some things that I had written down on my on on the list that uh, that I had to have, you know, and I think that's good if people are looking for me, you know, they've they've been through a divorce or something. Uh, man, don't make the same mistake twice, you know. Write out write out a list, you know, or something that, uh, you know, do it different the next time. Yeah. And uh, my goodness, that's what I did. But but I don't want to talk about that right now because for the sake of time, I'm going to let my my wife uh, say some some stuff about shattered lives too, um, honey. Well, like Brian, um, I also had an 18 year old marriage that failed, and uh, I guess when my marriage ended, um, it wasn't a good marriage, but it was still I, f I felt like my life was shattered. And I felt like the dreams that I had had for myself and even for my children had been broken. And I went through a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt, because I felt like um, I had a lot of people in my life at the, at the time that uh, were religious and they kept telling me I couldn't get a divorce and everything. And I felt like um, a real failure because I have, was going through a divorce. And I felt like, um, I don't know, I had, I guess, feelings of hopelessness and I was even suicidal. But I was so afraid. I was afraid that even if I took my life, that God would send me to hell because I was divorced. And it was about that time that um, the Lord sent a couple into my life who um, kind of mentored me. They, they helped me to get over the, the condemnation that I was putting on myself and helped me to realize what God's grace was. And that I guess what I really learned through it all was that it was more important for me to serve the Lord than to stay in my bad marriage and that that was more important to God. And uh, this is what we tell people when they come you know, and talk to us. We don't encourage divorce, but unless, you know, if, if you're in a bad marriage and you've done everything you can to make it work and it's not working, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's, God is a God of grace and He loves you and he, he has a good plan for your life. He doesn't want you to live unhappy your whole life. He wants you to live an abundant life in Him. And, I guess that um, I did the same thing that Brian did. I started going to bars and, and uh, just trying, it, trying to dry out the condemnation that I was feeling on myself. And uh, once these people came into our lives, into Manchan, and they, they helped us a lot. And they helped us to get over a lot of the, the things that we had been, in, in the past, been through in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, we gave our lives to the Lord. I know I got down on my knees at the altar. And uh, just as Brian said, I had to get right before God. And I had to to give my life totally to Him. And, uh, and even after that, I still, I still battled a few things. You know, I got into a few bad relationships. And uh, I really started seeking the Lord over this because the person that you spend your life with has got to has meet a certain criteria. You know, there's nothing wrong with writing a list. And what I did, I wrote a letter to God and, uh, because to me, He's the master gift giver. And I wrote Him a letter. And I kind of like to share some of the things that were on my list with you. Um, of course, the first thing that I had on my list was um, he has to be a, a man of God, but not religious, but love the Lord with all his heart and want to serve the Lord together with me. And that was the most important thing to me. Um, another one was I wanted him to love my children, and he does. And Brian's raised six children, so I knew he wouldn't have a problem with that. And uh, I was writing songs at the time and um, realizing God was calling me into not only into a songwriting, into songwriting and singing, but he was calling me to be an evangelist. And uh, I wanted somebody who would understand that. And I had no idea in this world that God would send me Brian, who is known to be one of the best guitarists in the country. And that really showed me what is most important to God was, was his ministry and getting his word out there. And uh, I look back now, you know, and I, I just, I can't believe what the Lord has done for me. And I can see that all the bad things that I have been through, that the shattered pieces and all were, they were for a reason, that God was making a plan come about in my life. And he was, he was planning um, the ministry. He was planning for Brian and I to be companions. And I just can't thank him enough for it. And I'm so thankful. And I even look back on the bad things that I went through, and they prepared me for now. You know, now we're able to help a lot of people. And we're really thrilled at how many people are coming up to us and they're watching this show and thanking us for being so honest and, and for bearing our, our souls. 
And uh, that's what we're all about. That's what we want to do. We want to reach as many people as we can through our shattered lives and, and show you how to pick up those pieces. I believe that today that there's going to be people watching this show that are going through some things right now, even coming out of relationships, coming out of maybe even years of deception mm -hmm. in their lives. People, because yeah. I know we went through a similar situation where you, your trust is broken in people when you get hurt that way, when someone deceives you, mm -hmm. when you find out that somebody, maybe you're in a relationship and you find out that they're, they're not the person who you thought they were mm -hmm. and you don't know who to trust and you feel like inside the pain just won't go away. You want to reach out to God you want Him to heal you, but you feel like turning from Him. Mm -hmm. But if you mm -hmm. turn to the Lord, He said in His Word that He's near those ones that have a broken heart and such as be of a contrite or humble spirit. Mm -hmm. He wants to heal you today. I believe that the Lord showed me this this morning before we were going to do the show that there's going to be people watching that are they're just hurting because someone's lied to them. They've gone through a deceptive relationship maybe even someone close to them has hurt them in this way but if you turn yourself over to the Lord and if you say Lord take this hurt fill me with you with your Holy Spirit and your mm -hmm. peace and your love I surrender all to you he can come in and heal you he can take your broken heart your broken life the shattered pieces and begin to mend them again mm -hmm. he loves you mm -hmm. he has a plan for you if he can do it for me for us, if He can heal us like He has, mm -hmm. He can do it for you. He yeah. will do it. And I praise Him because He has healed me. He healed my broken heart. I've had a broken heart a few times, <laughs> as we all have. But He did heal me, and I just give Him all the glory for it. Amen. And God has a plan for everybody's life, for everyone out there. The Lord, you're important to God. Um, I wanted to share with you something that the Lord did for me. Um, when I was around the age of 18, I felt called of the Lord that it was His will for me to go to um, this Bible school in Phoenix. It was called the Master's Commission. Because in the Master's Commission, it's where young men and women were, they were dedicating their lives to God, and they were just on fire for God. And I wanted that fire. And I just, I wanted to seek the Lord with all my heart, with everything. And I was doing that, but going through this Master's Commission, they did things like they dug real deep into the Word. They, you had to do scripture memory every day, and it just it built me up. It builds you up. The scriptures do. But um, at that time, when I was wanting to go, I remember that I didn't have the finances that I needed to go, and I just believed the Lord that it was His will for me to go. So I remember... One night, we prayed that if it was the Lord's will, that He would send me the finances that I needed. And He did. He supplied the need. And it was an awesome miracle. I remember I was so excited that it was really His will. And when I started going to this school, I stopped dating. And I just started waiting on the Lord for the right one that He had for me. Because I was believing that God had the right one for me out there. And... During that time, I remember feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. I went through a lot of struggles, feeling lonely, but I, I just, the Lord showed me, don't be with somebody just out of loneliness mm -hmm. because the Lord wants to fill that loneliness. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be a whole person so Amen. He can bring that whole Amen. person into your life. Amen. And I am so glad that I waited for God's best because it's just so awesome. I, I'm in all of the Lord. I will always be in all of the Lord when He's done in my life. He sent my husband to me, and I love him very much. I'm so glad. We're so happy. And I just praise the Lord Jesus for everything that He's done in my life. And He can do it for you. If He did it for me, He can do it for you. He can heal your broken heart, and He can just fill you with His peace. Amen. He has a plan for you. Amen. That's really encouraging. And the one thing that I like to recommend to people, too, is uh, that, that have been through a divorce and you're looking for a companion is, is date or be engaged for at least a year mm -hmm. because 
I'm telling you, people can trick you within three, three to six months is when they show their true colors, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. A lot of people out there and, and living in deception because they really don't know somebody before they marry them, you know. That's an important thing to, yes, to do. Um, <clears throat> once again, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. And uh, mm -hmm. until the next time on The Spirit of Truth, I'd like to say God bless everybody and thank you. And uh, we're going to have Elizabeth take us out right now with a song called Trust Him Now. Just trust the Lord with all of your heart. He'll never let you down. Amen. tired of giving it your all. You've done all that you can do, and you're going nowhere. Take some time to pray, and remember His word. I'll never leave you. Trust Him now, before pick up those shattered pieces of your life and put them back together just like you did for all of us.